Well, good evening, my friends. Kevin, the comic doctor, coming to you with another edition of One on One. And you know what? I'm the comic doctor, but you know what? Maybe you should call me the toy doctor, too, because I love my toys. Uh, you all know that I talk about uh, my toy collection from time to time on my show. And uh, so, like I said, with one-on-one, -on -one, I want to bring on a variety of different guests. And uh, this young man is uh, is a fella I wanted to get on the show. I thought of him right away. Whenever I do these types of things, like, oh, Brian would know this or Brian would know that when it comes to toys. Because this man, like I said, is a human encyclopedia when it comes to vintage toys. Who am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about Brian Hyler. Now, Brian is... Uh, He's a local guy. He lives not too far away from me. It's kind of funny. I probably could have brought him in studio, but no, I uh, I have him here, and he is the editor of and creator of Toy Venture Magazine, and also toy, the Toy Venture uh, YouTube channel. And here he is right now, Brian. Welcome to One on One. Oh, hey, man. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I was actually watching the delayed on <laughs> Facebook, okay. and I was getting. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> that's all right man no worries <laughs> how you doing I'm, I'm doing good um not, not having a rough day but otherwise uh things have been going pretty well yes brian already explained to me he, he has been hacked his facebook's been hacked and yeah it's left him a little flustered i don't blame him because it's if anybody bad. has advice don't well don't tell me on facebook <laughs> um but yeah i'm i'm uh i'm trying to prove who i am uh somebody's very persistent in trying to take this account yeah, I, I've had friends go through this, and having your account hacked is not fun. Well, hopefully for the next 45 minutes or so, we can get your mind off of that. I hope you can. So we can tap into that brain of yours. Um, because, like I said, you are – I've known a lot of guys who are, who are collectors, but you go one step further. You, uh, you, you know, you you not only walk – you know, what is it? You don't also you, – you don't just talk the talk. That's what I'm looking for. You walk the oh, walk. Yeah. That's what I was trying to come up with. Yeah. And I, I – yeah, you actually, you actually created a magazine about vintage toys. Can you tell us a bit about Toy Venture Magazine? Oh, yeah. Um, I love magazines. I always have, and I collect them, and I collect vintage toy magazines. And I used to love uh, things like Toy Fair and Lee's and uh, Toe Marts, which mainly fell out because of the, um, the, the print decline. But... I, you know, I, I got I got really involved in it, and I was I realized that like there's all kinds of niche publications still out there, popular niche publications, and I, I thought yeah, I want to do this again. I want to I want to bring this back, and I had a lot of fun with the first issue, which was kind of like a COVID project where we kind of talked about a toy line, and then I just wanted to keep going, cataloging things in a certain way that I've always wanted to do. I've always kind of wanted to do this since I was like a teenager right and the magazine each issue do you and how many issues have there been now there's been quite a few um, yeah there's been 11 I'm working on 12 right now I uh, got a great cover artist who I can't talk to right now through Facebook <laughs> but, uh, uh, but yeah yeah uh, it's it's really clicking along and we've got some really um, interesting stuff going on now, what were some of the issues focusing on? For example, give our you know to give you yeah, our, like it, primarily we we try to keep it in in a I'd say from the '60s to the '90s, right? Because like you know I, I mainly like action figures, but I'm fascinated by a lot of toy lines and, and especially you know light unlicensed things or merchandise from TV shows, that sort of thing. Love it, yeah. And um, we you know we've covered everything from like. Uh, HR puffin stuff, uh, promotional puppets to, um, you know, knock off, uh, knock off like 1950s outer space women. Nice. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's one of my favorites. Uh, the, uh, Frankenstein Jr., which is a character created by uh, Universal that to promote the parks, uh, or no baby Frankenstein, pardon me. Frankenstein right. Jr. is the, uh, uh, we we did a whole issue about a obscure Japanese show called uh, Marine Boy, okay. Um, and we have ongoing articles where we're like chronicled um, the the Planet of the Apes by Migo, which I'm still finishing up on. Uh, Hasbro's Super Joe was was a, was a big one for us, and uh, we're working on stuff like uh, some some Micronauts related articles and um, Shogun Warriors, a comprehensive Shogun Warriors, which. Um, 
intimidates me because <laughs> it's it's so uh, it's so large. Last day, eh? I, I I love both those lines, the micronauts and the Shogun Warriors. We can talk about that later, maybe. But um, mm. uh, now you also do Toy Ventures uh, uh, YouTube channel. Yeah, and uh, I I freaking love it. I, I I have it on when I'm doing my work, but I I. I I stopped doing my work and watch. You have to watch. It's kind of hard just to listen because you have you give great, uh, you show all the different toys and give it very deep dive explanations to everything. And where, how do you know all this information? Where do you find all this crazy information about like, uh, you know, I watched the one um, with, with GI Joe, the, 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 the 12 inch GI Joes. And you're talking about the villains they created and you just, it's unbelievable. You get all that information. I don't know where you get it all from, but it's fantastic. Well, I mean, there's a, there's a, like the internet's pretty good for stuff yeah. like that but um also like it's just when it's something you like um you should go for it yeah. you know even like um all i can say is like my son talked about history all his life and he's a history major now you know yeah. and it's, yeah, it's like sure. that makes sense i mean it, it if 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 something comes to you i just never knew what to do with this information <laughs> <laughs> until you turned 50 something and uh oh sure know. yeah yeah well you know haven't you seen that what was that um that amazing stories mark hamill oh yeah i love that <laughs> yeah, one yeah. he was a millionaire at the end right he sold oh yeah <laughs> action comics number one i think it was wasn't it and a couple of old toys trinket toys that are worth millions right yeah, yeah. So and what's what's your own personal origin story quickly? I mean, in a nutshell, because I remember I used to see you at the comic book shops, Ken's Comics, especially when Ken's, we were kids. Yeah. And uh, were you a comic guy too? Were you into comic books? I think, yeah. I mean, when I think about it, I think comics kind of got me onto collecting in general. I mean, there wasn't a lot going on with me. And uh, <laughs> when I was about 10 or 11, two things happened. One, I was allowed to go to the SCSI downtown we had, um, but not into the pool hall. No, no. And Bad and, things happen in the pool. Yeah, you stay on that other side of Shorty's. That's and right. then um, <laughs> then there was a little like hole in the wall called Book Between that opened up. Yep. Right and it was the real musty um, kind of... One of the ladies that worked there, I remember... Um, <laughs> I was looking through the, they had a comic bin and it would change every day. And that's what started the obsession. I couldn't wait to get there every day. But I remember one day I was, I was like, I had ran there so I could beat other kids and I'm having trouble breathing and I'm breathing in cigarette smoke. Nice. And I look and the lady behind the cash has a smoke and you know, like a Harlequin. <laughs> and I told that story to a friend like 15 years later. He's like, yeah, that's my mom. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Mom selling you trinkets and God knows what. <laughs> no, I mean, she just worked there. Yeah. I, yeah. Hey, man, I, I remember going to the movies and, my, you know, everyone's smoking. You can see a big cloud of smoke in the movie theater when we were kids, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that that's like probably comics were the gateway. And then things like what I was looking for was really already kind of off the beaten path. Um, gold key, uh, oddball stuff, TV stuff, especially TV stuff of shows I'd never heard of. Right. You know, um, and I think I think that and then that kind of graduated also through the Star Wars comic, mm -hmm. which prompted my dad to take me to my uh, first comic book store. Um uh, Morgan Self. Morgan Self. Yeah, that's right. Morgan, so the book between wasn't a comic book store. It, it was a used bookstore. But Morgan Self had a very classy, uh, actually nice comic book store, as I recall. But the back um, of the store wasn't it? Comics. The back of the store, and the rest was regular books. Morgan Self. Well, place. when I when I, I remember, there was like two sides to it, mm -hmm. and one side was the used books, and then the other okay. side was the comics. Um, my dad hated it in there. Yeah. I remember that. Like, oh you, could, God. you could find some gems in there in the old days. I remember that when I was young. But first comic I bought there. I know the first comic Ken bought in there because um, he told me it was uh, Dark Shadows. Okay. I never forgot that because mine was Fantastic Voyage. Nice. Yes, I didn't know what it like. I was like, "Is this the movie?" And um, it wasn't. <laughs> well, some gold key books are really quite 
<laughs> expensive now. I mean, uh, Scooby Doo, for example, uh, Gold Key is hugely expensive. Uh, the first issue of, of Scooby Doo and all the Star Trek uh, issues as well. The early ones are, if they're in high grade, are, are quite expensive. The the Scooby Doo, even in low grade, because it was a very low print run, is is quite quite pricey. So, yeah, yeah. Like I, I did one for a guy recently. Came back at seven zero, and I think it sold. Okay, I think it was like four thousand dollars. It was like what for Scooby Doo number? One? Yeah, it's crazy, crazy. So, so comics helped you get into toys. That's cool. Yeah. And, well, one of the things I forgot to mention was I loved picking up famous monsters. Yeah. And um, Heroes World catalogs would surface. Right. And the merchandise in the back of those started a real interest in, in toys. And uh, you're actively collecting still. You still look for your your little nuggets. You're looking for them. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> Treats. Yeah, no, I, I still collect. I think I'm more on the, the side of, like, I'm collecting this so I can document it, use it in a project, but it, it may not be here forever. Right. Um, I'm, I'm doing a lot of that lately. Okay, cool. Well, you know, we, well, I brought you here for a specific reason, uh, to look at some toys. <laughs> toys that were inspired by comic book characters. Now... It doesn't have to be just superheroes, obviously. You know, you mentioned Star Wars. Star Wars first appeared in a comic book, uh, right prior to the movie, as, as a way of publicizing the film. Lucasfilm uh, went over to Marvel Comics and had them uh, put a comic book together, right prior to the movie's oh, release. So, yeah, I, I think that's how that worked out. Yeah, hundred um, yeah. percent. And then, uh, you know, even things like that might be, you know, Micronauts. I believe the toy came first. I, I could be wrong. It, it, it's absolutely. It was a. Um, <clears throat> Bill Matlow's son got them for Christmas. Okay. And then Bill Matlow went, hey, I could do something with this. Well, there you go. See? Yeah. I told you. Encyclopedia. Encyclopedia. Well, I'm telling you guys. It's crazy. And I like Bill Matlow. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Well, so again, we're, we're, I'm not going to keep you on here for two hours or anything like that. I like to keep, keep the show down to about an hour long. Uh, I asked you, what were your favorite comic inspired toys i don't know if you picked anything out of your collection i i grabbed a few things if we need but i'm happy to see what you've got first and people who are watching do you remember any of these toys what were some of your favorite toys let us know in the comment section there and i'll i'll pop your comment up so go ahead brian I'll yeah you sure I, what you got. I purposely excited. kind of picked some things that are not normally chosen because okay. i like them equally to the other things right um <clears throat> So this is, uh, this is something I just recently completed and I'm really happy about. And, and it is the um, oh. AHI uh, Remote Control Super Friends buggy. Holy cow. With Aquaman, Robin. I don't know why Aquaman's driving. I Aquaman got his license before Batman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, I don't know, I guess they're in a parade. I'm really not sure, but I had one before, but I think Batman was missing it. It just, it just looks weird. It just, Does it still it, work too? I would not. I haven't tried. No. Um, <clears throat> these things were not meant to last. Uh, meant to yeah. last. Like it's like even on a why try yeah. situation. <laughs> like <laughs> now, AHI. What year would that have been released? That toy there, you think? Yeah, it's a seventy-four. Okay. Yeah, maybe seventy-five. All right, cool. All right. Now, was it Mego, the company that was the first to license these things, these properties, or did a lot of other toy companies do it as well? Or did these companies do it after Mego? I think at the time, like what happened was there was this big boom of superheroes in the 60s. Right. And then after uh, Batman caved, uh, they basically uh, they deemed it a fad. And Mego. Uh, the people at Mego got the idea for the world's greatest superheroes, which I, I really do think they were the pioneers to bring it back. They got the idea that the characters didn't, yes, Batman's not on TV and Captain Action didn't last, but uh, these kids are being fed, you know, Spider-Man, the Adam West show, the, um, the George Reeves, Superman, you know, reruns, that sort of thing every day after school. Right. They're seeing them in comics. They're seeing them in comic strips. It's like the, the, these characters are evergreens, and they were right. So they got the they got the license, and then what happened was, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire, and right. uh, you know, you get, uh, and you know, what? I'll show another thing, and a yeah, perfect please. example of this is, and you're a guy around my age. I, I think we're we're yep. pretty close in age. Um, 
you could I'm sure you can remember being like five or six, and there was like superhero everything mm -hmm. for that time, just before Star Wars. And this is yep. one of my favorite things to collect, and and people don't talk about these enough. Well, you know, if you're you're me, I, I'm fun at parties. Uh, <laughs> I the, bet. Oh, the yeah. Shazam Alco pencil sharpener. Nice. I buy more of these, but um, every time I try and find them, like I, I love these, and I think they're like you know cool for a certain price. But you'll just see, you'll just see one on like eBay for like eight hundred dollars. What? Like, no, no, no. It, it, yeah. You you've <laughs> hey, geez. you've made a mistake, sir. Yeah, I think so. You know uh, when I can buy something as amazing as the. Um, the bat slide rule. <laughs> to do your math equations on, right? To do my math equations on, um, <laughs> bat nerd. The, uh, the for ten dollars at a show, then you know, I mean, and that's all know. mid. That's like mid seventies. That stuff, probably. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was after Migo, and like after Migo had already done all this stuff. Like they, they, they kind of paved the way, and when in the trades, right both LCA, like Licensing Corp of America, and Mego would have, like, when you pick up a toy trade magazine from, like, 74, it's just, like, superheroes are a hit. And then the LCA ad would be, like, you know, come license our superheroes. So you can see, like, it's a one-two. Like, they, they get the social proof from the ad where Amigo's trying to sell superhero figures saying they're selling out everywhere. And then, you know, then you've got, like, come do business with us. So it really worked. Wow. Yeah, I know. That's great. I mean, I'll, I, I had, uh, you know, of course, you talked about, you know, Halloween costumes were rampant. Like, you know, Wonder Woman, Batman, Superman. You could get the plastic mask of Superman, which is kind of weird because he's just a Sometimes face. he had, like, a domino mask. Did he? And it's like, why? Yeah, that's kind of strange, eh? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's right. I did remember that. I remember that. Yeah. So, so you know, Halloween mask, and then you mentioned like you know, lunch boxes, of course, a popular, a popular thing as well, and uh, all those little tools, your school tools. Yeah, I had actually a Superman. I have it somewhere. I don't think it's around. I think it's, I packed it away. A little Superman room, like you know, this is Kevin's room type thing. You know, mm. you know, yeah. You, you you go to the toy shop. Oh, my phone's ringing. Ignore that. You go to the toy shop, and and yeah, you you find all kinds of this type of stuff. Uh, I'm kind of embarrassed because what I picked was a little more run of the mill. I feel I'm kind of embarrassed by this, but I love these things. Now, this is not my toy I played with. This, and you'll know what this is, of course. Uh, you know. Ah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you, you're picking some obscure stuff, but this sucker, this guy here, kept me busy in the late '70s into the early '80s. I've, I had all of them. This one, Spider-Man, Superman, Batman. Um, I found this one not too long ago, actually in Belleville. Some guy had it, but it has some water damage on it that you can see in the box here, but it's still a mint figure. So I went and grabbed it because mine's like, you know, toast, but this is, oh, I loved it. So these guys. Like were, a Belleville show? No, some guy just had it on Marketplace a few a year or oh, two. Oh, okay. So I just drove out and picked it up. It's like 50 bucks or something like that. Not bad. No, yeah, I know. I, not bad for 50 bucks. Yeah. I know. I was working all day the, long. Worth the drive to Belleville. So I have I have this one and I have Spider-Man in a box, which I picked up at a show at the Burlington Toy Show you and I were out years ago. Mm. And, and so I want to get the Batman and the Superman now, but you know, they're not cheap anymore, guys. These are these are, you know, like what should this cost? Like really, if you go to a toy show and you see something like this. So I, you know, depending on condition and depending on addition. Yeah. Um, although condition's probably the bigger factor. You can get anywhere from like 175 to 275 for That's it. Like That's he's not, not he's not super rare, but he is super popular. Oh yeah, the Hulk. Yeah, he's the Hulk. And that is that is one of Migo's coolest figures. Loved it. So, yeah. Now, the popular the Hulk TV show obviously catapulted that. And I think that's actually I would think that's kind of a Lou Ferrigno sculpt. I think. Maybe not. Maybe no, not. they they uh they couldn't get away with it. No, and they sculpted it. Um, but I would honestly say it, it's the same thing that befell them at the, uh, Linda Carter. They put Linda Carter on the box of the first wave of the figures. Right. And they took her off after because she wanted money for it. So I think that discouraged them from doing that. I hate to be rude. I just got to go and check something. Go, go check yeah, something. I'll be right back. I'll, I'll continue talking. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm really I guess I have to. Um, 
Nick Parker said, uh, I did love the Marvel Secret Wars toys. Star Wars, G.I. Joes, and Transformers were all in my toy box. The G.I. Joes and Transformers, and again, these are all comic book related too. Now, whether the comics came first, well, with G.I. Joe, the comics, sorry, the toys came first, obviously. Um, and if you have a second, go on over to Brian's uh, Toy Ventures show, or YouTube channel. He has these 15-minute videos that outline the history of all these comic or these toy lines, and he goes into great detail. So you really want to uh, you really want to go check that out. It's it's pretty awesome. And um, uh, you mentioned uh, Star Wars. I'll wait till he gets back because I do have some Star Wars here, and, and the Transformers as well. Transformers I found came out kind of towards the um, towards the end of uh, my. How can I say this? Transformers were very expensive at the time. And uh, I was kind of going into grade seven or grade eight when Transformers were really hit their popularity. And I think I bought one or two. I bought Optimus Prime and I bought Starscream. And then that was it because I was too old to play with toys. Yeah. Transformers launched in, uh, well, my first job was a store selling knockoff Transformers. Oh, really? Yeah, in the Whippy Mall. Um, okay. And yeah, you know, that knockoff Transformer stuff was all like anime, Gundam, and right. probably stuff worth just as much now. But the, um, the, that was way, I didn't even think of those things. Right. Uh, it was because I was in grade nine. But the one thing I did cave on was superpowers. Because even though I was in grade nine, uh, the, 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 the Flash and the Green Lantern, I was one of those as Migos. Yes. And it was that, like, oh, my God. And they were great. Mm -hmm. But those were more like in the the nerd Hummel situation, you know, at that time for me. I, I was I felt the same way. I, I really liked the Secret Wars toys that came out. Someone else mentioned Secret Wars there, I think. Yeah, Nicholas did. I love the Wolverine. I just love the action figure. I know the clock kind of clamped on, but I just loved it. Yeah. But I never bought them because I was too old for toys. You know, you know, I just yeah. didn't do it. And and even the the secret the the superpowers you talk about, same thing. I I just just I wanted to. Oh, yeah, I, I I went for it. Secret Wars, I couldn't get into. I didn't like no, that. I, I didn't like that style. And then there there was <laughs> I think there's a guy who took it over recent, like in the last ten years, like Fresh Monkey or something. And I like what he did with it. Okay, but but I guess it's just like. The, the 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 secret wars didn't benefit from the kind of like detail you can put on a toy now and and but it's there's just something that looks better about it now but then it just looked like utility grade action figure to me you know the reason why i like the and maybe you guys will agree or disagree with this the reason why i like those secret wars is I, I was in, I used to watch the, you know, Spider-Man is amazing friends. I'm sure you did too. Yeah. But they would show those episodes with Dr. Doom or with, they'd show kind of the B and C tier characters, you know, Dr. Strange. And I never knew who those characters were. I didn't read comics when I was 10 and 11. I just, my only exposure was the odd comic book my brother would have lying around the house or watching it on, on TV. So when I saw these awesome, you know, who's this, who's this daredevil? What's that? I saw that guy in a comic once or, you know, and I just, I don't know, I just, something, I, I, I like the DC stuff too, but the Marvel heroes, for some reason, they just, they spoke to me, I, you know, but hey, to each his own, right? Yeah, I just realized, like, when I was a kid, um, I think, I think I had a superhero period, and then I got, like, every comic I bought after that for a long time had nothing to do with superheroes, because, like, the late 70s were a golden age for licensed comics. Right. And, you know, you could get, like, Star Wars, Micronauts uh rom which i like i know some of these are in the marvel universe but you yep. know you see the fantastic four once in a while um yep. you know the godzilla shogun warriors like all that stuff was more my jam and then it went right to like the the larry hammer gi joe and then you know you jump on every trend right you could yep. buy man, man from atlantis comics and, yeah yeah uh, totally. you know I, I think i bought the first of like everything you know, for, for years, I, I remember like I spent my entire uh, allowance on the Blade Runner adaptation. Oh, did you? And oh, geez. Gonna... <laughs> I was like 10. I was yeah. like, oh, come on. <laughs> yeah. Blade Runner. I don't know. I love the movie, but maybe the comic was good. I don't know. I didn't read it. I didn't read it. It was a bit trippy 
for me yeah. at 10. Like, I just, sorry, it just didn't. I was, I wanted Harrison Ford to shoot robots or something. Yeah. Not that have a complex story, <laughs> a film noir that I don't understand. Now, here's one. Here's one. I don't know if you were into or not. I, I, I was a Star Wars guy. I, again, the Mego stuff all through the 70s. I was a big superhero. Planet of the Apes again. I was mm, crazy about that. Yeah. And I love your video on Planet of the Apes. Like, come on, man. Go watch those videos, guys. If you are, if you want some a, a real deep dive into these toy lines, you got to go over to Toy Ventures YouTube channel. Lots of, lots of uh, awesome uh, podcasts there. They're not very long. Like, what, 10, 15 minutes, 17 minutes, maybe some of them. They're not crazy long. Yeah. I mean, when I first started, I was like, I was struggling to make four minutes. Oh, really? Yeah. I just, uh, I, yeah, I can't. I think it's like a muscle. You have to kind of keep, um, you know, so I would just get like I look at some of my earlier videos. I'm like three and a half minutes. Like, what was I like? <laughs> was something going to happen if I didn't release this? Well, maybe maybe the analytics and YouTube will like it better. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, but <laughs> I yeah, I yeah, they're usually like anywhere from ten to twenty minutes. Yeah, and they're very informative. But this this line um, after Star Wars, I don't know. There's something about these guys turned me on, and. Uh, they they didn't they didn't start in comics, but they included comic books. Okay, okay. And were you to these at all or no? I think I bought like a He Man and a Skeletor, and I liked them. Uh, I think because I was like not, you know, I was getting into that age where you know I wasn't into action figures or I shouldn't be playing with them. But <laughs> we all kind of had that cool and i was also the kid who like bought the first of everything like i you know oh, christ star oh you know and then yeah I never take it so i had this drawer of like you know hawkeye from mash and like yeah, <laughs> yeah, just yeah very yeah. big so I, I think i bought a couple of those and, and i think the cartoon like i thought the booklet was neat yeah and i was kind of loving that like vallejo style artwork and and I saw the cartoon, and I'm like, "Oh no, this is <laughs> really bad." It, it might as well just like, and I don't want to bash anyone who's yeah. like six and watching it. You you should have enjoyed it. It was for you, yeah. <laughs> but um, it, to me, at that time when you're entering that kind of a my kid, I'm also kind of cynical, and you know, just it was it was it might as well just been Teletubbies, you know, and the way. Yeah. Around. Yeah, yeah. No, I get you. I don't. I did like them. I had a little, a little He Man kick there. Um, I, I watched it. Yeah, because it was on TV, and you know, I didn't get many channels. But no. uh, I also like, like, I'm, I'm deep in the lore of Thundercats. Oh uh, yeah. But I, I didn't actually like. I have, I've never owned a Thundercats toy to my knowledge, other than, you know, uh, buying something for somebody. I think I showed people this before, but I'll show it to you now. Hold on, I gotta go grab it. It's over here. One sec. I, now I'm gonna leave for a second. Go ahead. Oh, wow. Talk. It's your turn. Oh. No, just joking. Right. Oh, You're like three seconds. So this is what this feels like. Hi, everybody. <clears throat> yeah, I forgot this was really handy to me here, but um. You mentioned Thundercats. I watched it, you know, Thundercat, Thundercat. Yeah, I was into that too. Yeah. Like, again, I was at that age. I think it was in grade eight or grade nine. I go, I can't go to the store and be caught dead buying a Panther action figure or something like that, right? Or Bengali or whatever. <laughs> yeah, and it was, they were like massive too. They were they were not like discreet. Yeah, check this out. This one was given to me as a gift by one of my clients at the comic at the the, the pressing office there. He just, you know, was thankful I did some work for him and he gave me this. Look at this thing. Wow. So that's it? like a card, like a mint sealed first yeah. issue yeah, line. I don't know. I don't know if it's first issue, but it's early. Mm -hmm. It's 1985. Um, yeah, that would, that would probably jive with, I think that, I think the line came out in 86. Oh, actually it says 87 on here. It's just oh, 87. 87 on the card. Oh, okay. But anyways, I was like, what? You're giving this to me? And wow. I'm like, I've always wanted a, I've always wanted a lion -o, right? So it is absolutely sick. And you're right. Look how big this thing is. You can't walk out of the store. You know, you're going to walk out of the store and the girl you like is going to be sitting there going, well, well, you know, it's my brother. It's my little brother or whatever. Right. But um, yeah. So yeah, I love those two. Even though I didn't play with them as a kid. I just, I just loved that. 
you know, and while I was there, of course, you know, Dr. Zay has popped his head out too. There he is right there. Look at him. Yeah. In all, in all his glory. Right. Many <laughs> magnificent many, creature. Magnificent. Many, 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 many hours playing with these guys in the late seventies, boy. Oh my Lord. Yeah. yeah. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. I played with them way like well past the movies and everything. Oh, me like too. That. Like they, I was playing with them. I was like, I think one of my earliest things I was doing was going as a kid to yard sales, like as far as I could bar bike to find like Planet of the Apes stuff. Um, do you remember Pennyworth and in, in Ajax? <laughs> you <Yep>. do. <laughs> yeah. I found a wall of Mego Klingons in there for two bucks one day. Yeah, I uh, I got the uh, treehouse in there for five dollars. Yeah, but I, this was the the mid eighties. Oh really? Oh, this is yeah, I, the late seventies for me. I yeah. slipped into. I was in high school, and I slipped in there to get a pop or something. Right. And I was like, "Well, let's see, Pennyworth's like sad toy section." Yeah. You know, right. and a lot of amigos from there. I got my well, yeah, but I mean, this was like this was post. Yeah. Uh, the the great era of Pennyworth. This, like, I, I think they started going. Like, I, I, how long have they been gone? This oh my god! Been riveting for anyone who I know. Sorry, guys. It's a little town just east or uh, west of us. They had this like this second run store. This like like yeah. kind of like a liquidation place. Stores yeah. would go out of business. They'd buy their stock and sell them there. Yeah, yeah, and it was. They had like a. I actually didn't know that, but they, yeah. their their logo was a piggy bank, you know. Yeah. yeah, and that was there since the late sixties or mid. My mum used to go there all the time for bargains, and the toys were. You know, like I said, the late seventies. I got a lot of Migos. My Cornelius, I got from there. My Zero, I got from there. Yeah, and they were always yeah. discounted, so I was very happy. Uh, it, Rob, they were crazy. Oh yeah. Now Rob Bin's asking a question. I'll pop it up on the up on the uh on the on the screen there what do you guys think of the statues from sideshow and xm studios expensive <laughs> um yeah uh like i i don't know what it takes to make one of those um but uh it's not it's not something i've ever really dwelled on i'm not a i'm not a big statue guy right. um I, I don't own i don't think i think i own like two and one of them I bought kind of as a goof. Um, yeah, I so I don't really know that world. Are they like I don't even know how much they cost? They're very expensive. Yeah, yeah. They're like you're talking north of a thousand now to buy one. Um, Whoa. Oh yeah, they're big money. I've wow. got I've got I own about five of them. I kind of went on a little kick there, and I bought a few. <laughs> That's a jag, sir. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I know. It was nuts, and and I had a little area where I displayed them, but the boxes are massive. The boxes are like two feet by three feet and they take up so much room and you have to keep the boxes or else they're not worth anything to go to sell them. Um, but um, yeah, I, I, I like them. I like all that stuff, but it's just, you need a lot of space for them. So, and you need a lot of money for them, you know? Um, and the statue market's actually kind of soft right now. So if you are interested in older, you know. I didn't get that from the Jim Cramer show. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's like, I, I, I think, People always ask me about hot toys, and I go, "Well, yeah, hot toys is another one. Yeah, they're they're, they're uh, crazy expensive. Uh, yeah. They look really cool. Yeah, and I I don't think there's anything they could make that I'd be like, I gotta have that. I I, I it's weird. Um, it's just not my thing. They're they're about three to five hundred dollars a piece for those so yeah. hot toys, and there are super collectors out there, right? That that go, they have all of them. They have rooms full of them. Um, Robert Meyer Burnett, who's a guy I watch on, um, I think I had you send uh, one of your Toy Venture magazines. Yeah, I remember him from, uh, uh, oh boy, um, uh, his film there. I, oh, I, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and a free enterprise. Free enterprise. You know, I own it. And oh, do I you? Couldn't remember, it's just been so long since I've watched it. Um, yes. Yeah. And didn't he have a magazine too? I don't think he had a magazine. He, he okay. may have done some, he probably contributed to a Star Trek magazine. I would be, he's a big Star mm, Trek fan, okay. huge, but he's huge into hot toys. Yeah. And, and he, he used to love Migos. And when I show him the Migos, he's like, yeah, mm, yeah you know, no, to I mean, each their own. I mean, right. I get it. Right. Um, there, there's so, there's so many ways to love a, a toy. Like to, what toy means in your head is different for everybody. And uh, I don't think there's a right answer. I, I don't know what it is, man. I look at this, you know, Dr. Zayas, and I hold them and I smell them or whatever. And I, it just, it just, I don't know. Brings I, back, a, right? I just remember um, times. someone I know um, being really mad because remember you know, the TV show, The Venture Brothers? 
and uh, they were going to do action figures. And my friend Jason's company actually got them. And the guys who ran the the uh, Venture Brothers, um, he, he basically um, wanted to do it Mego style. So they were game, and it, it looked. I thought it looked fun. Um, and somebody I was somebody was like, "Oh, that's the most ridiculous action figure I've ever seen." Don't they know anything about detail? Blah 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 blah. <laughs> oh, well, and and I I stopped them and went. Uh, you click He Man. <laughs> that's it. And and the guy, the guy, okay, you know what? I, I, you got me. You that's got not me. anatomically correct. Yeah, at that, all, that right? is the dorkiest looking thing ever. Don't you know? But it, it, if you love it, I, I'm, it's, it, it's it's something different. It's it's style, right? Like I, even those yeah. those uh, when my daughter and son were really young, they collected. They collected. It was all me. Um, oh, the, sorry. I was, yeah. I was like, beards? Yeah, no. I, actually, I bought some off of you. Uh, beards? No, not beards. This is coming off tomorrow, by the way. This is going. Oh. I'm going to a goatee now. I've had enough of this scruff. But anyways. They're going to go evil. They're going to do the Comic Master. Thing? That's right. The Comic Master. That's a good idea. I never thought mm -hmm. of that. ComicMaster.com. But I, the, 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 the Justice League figures from the Justice League animated series. I did the uh, exact same thing. Um, although I actually bought them for me. <laughs> and then because I think they came out before my son. Oh, I can't remember anymore. Anyway, I, I was collecting them and then it just turned into like he liked it. Yeah. And um, I think he was a baby when they came out and he liked it. And I started just going, well, here. And then there was like times where he'd go, Dad, I'm going to a birthday party and I had them all on a wall. Take I'm this. Like, well, we, we don't need another John Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> Take John Stewart. Yeah. <laughs> the peg warmer. He's always over there. You always saw John Stewart. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I have about a hundred of those things, or 150. I, I'm sure I bought a few off of you and your son at one yeah. of the shows. Oh yeah, but we picked. He did some silly things where it's like you gave you sold, you know? Oh really? Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, because <laughs> it's like I wanted to keep them for him, right? And uh, it's it's over in the corner, but we have a, a glass case right just every figure we bought and played with and some of them are damaged and mm -hmm. got okay. some rare ones but who cares that's right uh and it's just it's so fun to to look at those guys and think of that and, um so yeah th those guys that's that's some of the my favorite toys in the room actually that's nice now the yeah. uh, my, my my star wars the only toys i have on display right now you see my presses behind me here these are going to go soon but you know all those action figures. Yeah, my Han Solo's worn; his hair's almost all gone. But you know, my mom bought me that when I was like, you know, six or seven, whatever it was. And uh, yeah, I'm not going to replace it. I'm just going to keep that one there. And yeah, you know, it's it's awesome. It's been with me a long time. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I have I have uh, the Mego Star Trek crew that are very very dinged up. Yeah, but they were but, they were the ones. Uh, it says here, do you think Ming Mego uh, DC? DCO and MD. I'm sorry if I if I butchered that. It says, do you think Mego will bring back the 3.7 inch scale? Because as you know, Mego has kind of been reborn. Will they bring back the 3.75 inch scale? I seem to recall, like I, you know, I don't, I don't work there, uh, and I guess <laughs> I don't think that I can enter them into any contracts here. But uh, I seem to recall that uh, Marty Abrams said he would do any scale. If if he was requested or if he could find a con customer base, yeah, they, they didn't they didn't have any issue. They're they're not just completely an eight inch scale company, um, and they've been trying a lot of uh, different concepts like um, co collectibles. Like I think they're called Minix. And, right. Uh, so yeah, I I, I mean, I, I I'm not saying they're going to do it, but I think if they they could and they could figure it out, they'd do it. How are they doing, Brian? Do you think? I mean, are they doing okay? I mean. A lot of competition out there, more than they ever had in the past. Obviously, I mean, yeah, I, um, I, I they seem to be uh, at least, uh, you know, I have no insider information. No, of course not. But I mean, they've got Marvel coming up, and uh, they seem to be pretty chipper about everything. It, it, it seemed to be good. I, I, the last time I really spoke with them was in August. I, I ran into um, Marty Abrams, and we, we chatted for maybe five, ten minutes, and, and he. He was really excited that he had Marvel and he wants to push it and and uh, he seemed he seemed chipper and uh, yeah I I don't know anything other than that really. Um, no, there's an amazing assortment of, of toy lines now. If you want to get into it, we're not playing with the toys. Obviously, nowadays we're we're putting them on display. Um, 
do you do you do you buy a lot of the new stuff or you stick with vintage i'm I'm only vintage really myself but what about you do you still go buy um new stuff? yeah i do i i i have like um i'm mostly just still vintage i'm mostly interested in that and i'm not like actively looking to collect a line of anything right now um in fact i'm trying to figure out how to downsize a little bit and but I do, you know, baby likes his tchotchkes and uh, I'm just trying to think like I, I made a silly purchase recently. Um, something just, just ridiculous. Like, Oh, it was, it was a, it was one of the um, blue demon, the one of the luchador wrestlers. And I had, I had to get him in a little blue suit because okay. um, I, I love the, it's a superhero related toy, I guess. Um, not a vintage one, but I love Mexican wrestling films and I love the weird little universe that they are. And nice. just, just, I love when they come to meetings and stuff in suits sure. and those masks, you know, it's, it's so like, this is what people do. You know, there are these odd little things from when we were kids that you just, you, you want, like I, I went out and bought, uh, I, I'm sure you know what these are because you know, everything there is about toys, but you know, the company, no, the, well, okay, let's see what, the British company Imperial. Imperial. Like, yeah, they made like um, they were a stationary company. They made little toys and such. You mentioned the word Chotsky. It's kind of like that. They were they Britons. Made these, pardon me. Britons. No, it was. I I think it was called Imperial. It was just. It was. It was. It was a, a great a British company, and they made these little Fred the little Flintstones characters. And they oh were, neat. And they were all just like almost like blown plastic. They were kind of translucent, and you can see through them, and they. And remember that was one of the very first toys I ever got, like when I moved to our new house in Oshawa, and it was like from Playtime Toys in the Oshawa Center. And I bought like I got Fred Flintstone and Barney Rubble, I think it was, and that's all I ever got. And I ended up hunting them all down. I have the whole set now, of course, but I mean little oddities like that that I just remember reminded me of when I was like five, you know. Play Playtime Toys. Yeah, you know where Churchill's clothes at the mall is? It was I really thought it was called Dominion Playworld. No, Playtime. Playtime. And actually, you know, I always second guessed myself. Was it called Playtime? And when I and I follow that vintage Oshawa Facebook page, mm -hmm. and, and someone did say, I asked a question that I said, who worked in the mall? And, and I got like 400 responses, and a few said Playtime Toys, Playtime Toys. So I was, yeah, it was called Playtime Toys. It was right there beside Churchill's. Yeah, it was across from the movie theaters. Uh, not quite as far down as that. Oh, okay. That's where Dominion Playworld was. Okay, maybe a different company then. But yeah, Playtime yeah. lasted, I think, 78, 79, 80 maybe. And then they went belly up, I believe, or just they closed down oh. or something. But yeah, it wasn't there very long. Huh. Yeah. yeah. I don't. Huh. Memory cheats, eh? Yeah, I know. Oh, Imperial. DC uh, also says Imperial made a great five POA knights with horses. Oh, okay. You know what that is? Yeah, five points of articulation nights with horses. Oh, oh, okay, there you go. Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, going over to Johnny West. I mean, I, my brother had a bunch of Johnny West figures, too, that I was really liking as well. But that's, again, that's that's not comic book related at all. It's Western, but not really comic book. But Yeah, yeah. yeah. Johnny West, the, the hand-me-down, every kid's hand-me-down if you had an older brother because it was hard to destroy a Johnny Yeah, West. those things were solid. The, the horse's tails always broke off. Right, but other yeah. than that, they're pretty hardcore. Anything I, else to show, Brian? Any, any oh, yeah, things? I got a few things. Yeah, let's, um, go. let's see. These would remind me always of kind of like feeling really ripped off when I saw them because I saw these in a Heroes World ad in the late, you know, 70s, early 80s. I can't remember quite. And it was these like Ben Cooper jigglers. So this is like the Red oh. Skull. I remember those. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I was like, really? Just like as a kid, I wanted to order them. And, uh, you know, if I'd ordered these, I would have been, like, horrified. I always hated <laughs> play. I always wanted Jigglers to be action figures. Right. So and it was always, stand like, up, yeah. yeah, I would have Planet of the Apes one, and I was like, Ugh. Or the stretchies, um, the stretchies, too. You want them to be action figures, and they just... The bendy, yeah, the bendies are a little better, because they could sometimes, like, lean on stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but this what is the, the thing. Oh, wow, what's that from? This is the same series. Oh, really, eh? The Ben Cooper series, yeah. Again, we're talking mid seventies here. No, I'd say like nineteen eighty. I want to say okay, eighty. Little later, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, or seventy nine, eighty. But I think it was around the time that like um, they did Doctor Strange, the Fantastic Four, and and um, 
uh, Red Skull, Red Skull for some reason. And I think it was like kind of like they thought these properties, because they were going to be on TV, would have some sort of resonance. I'm not really sure what why what that character selection was all about, but that it's one theory of mine, anyways. Okay. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I just wanted to jump into something a little more obscure. Yeah, you've got a lot. Well, what you're showing yeah. already is quite obscure. I mean, again, I'm always embarrassed. I've showed three of the most popular things yeah. you could have bought at that time. But that's okay. That's why they're popular. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's true. Like, it's, that's you know, true. Um, this is the, the Mighty Crusaders, um, the web oh, parachutist. parachutist. And this was, um, this was like a real white whale of mine. Um, basically because it, it's, it's so weird and I, I like those comics and, and they got a toy line from Remco that is not that good. And, um, but that, that, uh, the idea they were going to do like little helicopters and little parachute figures. It was like, for me, I love those parachute figures mm -hmm. and I love the mighty crusaders. And it's like, I, I don't even like the mighty, the mighty crusaders action figures are kind of pants. Like they're, they're. He's like, this is what they look like. Okay. And it's like, eh, I'm I'm more or less like that parish that cheap parachuting toy better than this. Oh, I used to I used to love the parachute. I think you actually yeah. bought a couple off. I, 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 I just found those. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. They were the uh, Planet of the Apes ones, I think. I mean, there was like a whole bunch in there. Like I was gonna use them for customs, and well, yeah, you know, both know what happened there. No, oh, I I yeah, I buy comics all day. Yeah, I'm going to work on that comic, and then yeah. I, never, I do it three years later. But yeah, those are great. The parachute, the parachute toys were cheap, right? And the parents here just take it and shut up, you know. And you get you get your parachute toy. You be in the backyard flipping it up, and you know, hopefully, it would get caught on a tree. But I, I used to have a blast with those parachute toys. If you're born in like '69, '70, '71, '72, '73, you you played with those for sure. For oh sure. yeah, for five, ten minutes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> for five or ten minutes exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then Jive Turkey says, I've been tempted to buy some of those cheap Hong Kong plastic dinosaurs I had when I was a kid. No yeah. idea why, and I have no idea what I will do with them. It's a compulsion. Please help. I had a real dinosaur phase as a kid, too. And uh, every time I see like some of the imperial dinosaurs, not the I don't think the imperial you're talking about, this is the US one, oh, okay. pardon me, um, who they made these like you know, dimetrodons and different things you, you you had to have seen them growing up they were they were the steadmans kind of thing and um i i really want to reunite with those but it's like why like what am i you know what am i going to do with any of this stuff well that's just it right and jive turkey i mean please help you it's like the comics man you you go down that rabbit hole you you, you dig out your old collection of comics you 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 get it pressed and clean and graded you do one, you do two, you do five, you do 10, you do 50, and it becomes, you know, a hobby, an addiction. I don't know. You know, I don't, I don't know how to tell you. I'm the same way when it comes to toys, and I see something I had when I was a kid, and I want to own it again. And that doesn't, that's not the case for you, though, right? Brian, you, you just appreciate the, you know, rare stuff that even if you didn't own it as a kid, you just want to have it as a part of your collection to, to kind of. It's it's you know? it's so weirdly pronged, and I don't sometimes even understand my own logic. Um, yeah, there's stuff I I think I justify. I would have had known it was out there. I would have wanted it as a kid, or I just fell in love with it as an adult. The concept of it. Um, yeah, it, it's there's all kinds of rabbit holes and and whatever you want to call it, justifications. For, for what's in the room like there's stuff i i haven't purchased and uh, or i have you know came out before i was born that i like but it's it's all just like a mixed tapestry that's it you know what jive turkey i don't think there's anything wrong with with picking up some of these things as long as you're not you know it's not uh causing you any you know financial problems or yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? it's just like a house full of dinosaurs well, well yeah, yeah. yeah. Who, who you're hurting right i mean I, I don't see a problem with it again i think everything in moderation is okay um it's when it becomes you know when you're putting on your visa or you're using your line of credit to pay for stuff that that becomes i think a dangerous uh dangerous uh you know practice you know what i'm saying yeah 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 so any more brian any more goodies or are you tapped out no, no, I'm not. Well, I'm not tapped out, but I didn't know how uh, much this table could hold. 
but I'll bring one more. <laughs> Jive Turkey says, hang on, I'm going to get my wife. Say that again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sure. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> so this is something that was oh, gifted cool. to me a few years ago uh, by a friend of mine. And this is a legitimate toy. It is not from the era of radio like you'd think it was because no. it's an esoteric character. But this uh, the shadow license, I guess, kind of got a little juice thanks to the popularity of like, you know, more conventional superhero merchandise, Batman, that sort of thing. So, right, um, this company, this weird company called Madison Imports, made all kinds of toys, and most of them are using the same molds as like Batman toys. Right, like this is pretty much the Batman utility belt, but now they've just added, you know. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the shadows, you know, gear. Yeah. Sure. There you go. <laughs> yeah, you know. We saw that a lot. We see that, we said all the time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, and, and I just there's just a naivete to it that I like. Um I always what is yeah, it the belt buckle reads shadow crime fighter. So you know that yeah, the, well, I, I, you know, it should also say if found, you know, call Lamont yeah. Cranston, you know. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, it's just it's there's it's just the silliest thing, and yeah. Yeah, that's that's what's fun about toys, really. Well, that's awesome. Well, listen, I know we've been on for about close to an hour now. I'm, I promise I wouldn't keep you on forever. Just wanted to get a little taste of taste of that. Be an interesting thing to do, and I want to introduce, uh, you know, this, my my subscribers to you, and hopefully, maybe some will come over to your channel because I'm telling you guys, if you're a toy fan, there's no better place to be than. Toy Ventures, uh, yeah, the, toy, sure. the Toy Ventures uh, YouTube channel. Now, uh, Brian, where can they? We talked about your magazine. Where can they get your magazine? Can, you, can, can they still get it? Like I got people oh, yeah. here from all over the place. Yeah, I have uh, I have eleven issues right now available. You can get it at PlaidStallions.com or ToyVenturesMag.com. Okay, and can they get it at their local comic book store too, or not so much? Yeah, um, I've yet to run into it at comic book stores, but I do ship to Diamond. Um, there's also like if you're in certain cities or towns, you know, like in, in Toronto, it's available at a couple of shops. It's it's available at uh, uh, Bounty Hunter Toys in in Hamilton, places like that. So if somebody has a, a local comic shop and they obviously use Diamond, if they say, "Hey, can you get me a copy of the you know Toy Ventures?" Yeah, they can get it for you. So there you Absolutely. go. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so if you guys want a copy of Toy Ventures, ask your local comic book shop to ask Diamond to send them some, and then there you go. Okay, well, I'll put links down also below later on today. Uh, I have one. I, I have the Mego Museum on there, um, which we didn't even talk about the Mego Museum, but we'll, that's what I, I, we'll talk about that another time. Brian, thanks so much for giving me an hour of your time. I know it was a stressful night for you. Yeah, I'd appreciate it, man. I, I needed the diversion. Oh, thanks. Okay, we'll talk to you soon. Take care. You got it. Bye now. Bye. All right, guys, there you go. Brian from Toy Ventures Magazine in the Toy Ventures YouTube channel right here live with you. I hope you enjoyed that. Something a little bit different because, like I said, we're a comic book channel. But you know what? From time to time, I have no problem veering off. And you know what? I have a few more guests coming your way pretty soon. A pretty high-profile guest coming probably, I think it's February the 8th. I'm not, I, I, well, can I say it? I'm not going to say it. I'll post. I'll post the uh, the link or not the link. The thumbnail once that is up and coming. But I'll just say it's a, a pretty uh, pretty uh, well known comic book figure will be joining us uh, on February the eighth. Uh, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that notification bell too. Because sometimes, like today, for example, I didn't I didn't do the show on on Thursday. I did it on Wednesday. Usually the show was on Thursday. Brian couldn't make it tomorrow, so we did it today instead. But listen, guys. Thanks so much. Remember, I'll be here again on Tuesday uh, for another CGC unboxing. You don't want to miss that. And until then, my friends, have a great rest of your week. Have a fantastic uh, night. I'm trying to figure this software out so I can say goodbye cleanly with you. Let me find out where it is. Uh, okay, it's not there now. Oh, wonderful. Oh, there it is. I found it. Okay, I figured it out. I figured it all out. Sorry. <laughs> have a great week, guys, and we'll see you very, very soon. All right? Take care. Bye for now.